you guys made me cry. So you did it. You got to me. <laughs> Juan, could you talk a little bit about your regard for the audience when you're making a movie? Yeah, sure. I mean, uh, as a filmmaker, we, uh, as a director, we uh, go to the point where I realized that it had to be the whole film itself an emotional journey. Since uh, in telling the story of these people, you, you, we realized that there was no time to think about what was happening. Everything happened so fast that had to be very, very emotional. Uh, and there were moments of, of um, uh, emotion, there were, there were moments for anguish, for tension, for release. So it had to be like a kind of like a very intense emotional journey in order to put the audience into the action all the time. So is your goal to have the audience experience what the characters on screen are experiencing? Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure, but not, not just what the characters are feeling, but what, also what we felt in doing the film. I mean, we were very close to all the people uh, uh, portrayed in the film, uh, especially the family, and, and, and also some survivors, some people uh, who had uh, contact with the tragedy. So what we did is just uh, to put what we saw, the emotion we felt in talking to them, in, in, in knowing about their stories, to put that on the screen to make the audience be part of it also. I'm always interested to see how true stories are depicted on film, and uh, I just wondered how did the how did the story come to you, Sergio? No, there was actually Belen who listened to it on the radio, so maybe she could. Yeah, I, I heard the story on the the story on the radio on a radio show, on the third anniversary of the tsunami. There were several guests in one of these, uh, in, I think, the most popular radio show in Spain, and uh, there was among them there was this woman, uh, Maria Henry was also there. The, um, uh, her husband, and uh, she was really, uh, I mean, uh, that story blew me away, and uh, the following day I, I was meeting with uh, my young aunt Sergio, we had been working on another project that fell apart, and uh, I was so excited by the story that I started to tell them the story, and, uh, and I got very emotional, and they, they, they were too very, they were trapped by it, and since that moment on we, we contacted Maria, and uh, we started to work on the script, so we started to write the script. So did you have contact with the real family during pre-production? Yeah, yeah. pretty this? much, especially in the development phase. Maria was um, with us uh, most of the time. Uh, she was giving us a lot of detail of uh, what, what it felt to be that, uh, there that day and about their personal experience. She, she worked really closely with uh, Sergio. Juan, watching it, I could tell that every shot was meticulously chosen and I wondered if you were if you're satisfied with the movie that you've made. Mm -hmm. Is there anything you wish you would have done differently? Well, the truth is that when we started to do this film, uh, we definitely were not sure about the results. I mean, it was uh, such a difficult task. It was an epic itself, the shooting. So, uh, yeah, you're right. I mean, every shot was a huge battle. Every 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 shot was. A miracle for us. Uh, it was uh, crazy the the logistics of doing the film and, and the, all the water sequences to work with the kids. Everything felt like something impossible. Yeah. Yeah. So, but but you're right. I mean, when, as a filmmaker, uh, for me, it's very important every time you choose uh, a shot, not just the, not not just the shot, but the frame of the shot. I mean, for me, everything has a meaning. Has a something to do about the story, every color, every sound, every everything had to tell uh, something about the story. Sergio, could you talk a little bit about uh, the dialogue of the kids, the children? How do you write for a kid? <coughs> you spend a lot of time listening to them, actually. And especially in this case where uh, Maria was sort of uh, our messenger between uh, the production team and the family. She would take her questions back and forth. And sometimes she was like, her, the memory of, uh, of her story would bring such incredibly sincere, honest and simple lines that I, I always had to find that my work would have to match that. Uh, it, was, it had to be very simple and it had to be almost invisible. It, the, the, the work was to actually give them lines that felt like they were actually not written. And on top of that, also the, the way Juan Antonio works is that he likes to improvise. He's, he's always, he, he does one take as it is on the script and then he lets the, the kids improvise. 
<coughs> so I can take credit for some of those lines and some of them that just came up on the shooting. <laughs> it's not. <coughs> so what, what was the most memorable sequence that was improvised? Do you remember? Um, it's actually, I think, uh, two of them. Uh, one is, uh, both are almost silent. Uh, one of them is uh, the moment where Daniel in the tree starts touching Maria and taking care of her. That was completely, that came out of, uh, of, young, of Johan, the kid who was playing that actor. And the second one, was, which is one of my favorite films in the moment, is when the, 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 when the Thai ladies take care of Maria and dress her up and clean her up. Mm -hmm. And I think that's like a beautiful moment because it's, it's uh, and I, I think that there's something very powerful about that scene and the, and the moment we're living now where it's like, there's this sense of when everything goes wrong, there's a sense of community that is not there when things are, are right for everybody. It's, we're individuals until, until a, a moment of crisis makes us all come together. And that was a very beautiful moment that was also like almost happening miraculously in front of the camera. I wanted to talk a little bit about your actors, Juan. Um, how do you direct experienced actors like Naomi Watts and Ewan McGregor? I think I felt very fortunate of working with uh, Naomi and Ewan since both are very courageous and brave actors uh, in taking a role like this, it has to do a lot with physical, very very demanding physically, uh, but also very demand, demanding emotionally. Uh, and I only spent a month uh, in the water. It was a uh, very physical shooting. She was swallowed in water for a month, uh, being drunk, being drugged by this uh, strong current. So it was, uh, it was, it was great. Uh, we, the thing is that it was very physical, very emotional. Uh, but the truth is that uh, we they we try to have all the time a sense of reality uh, in the set. I mean, uh, and I think it worked with the actors. Uh, the, the fact that the sets were huge, were amazing. Uh, we barely used uh, blue screen and. We work with uh, non-professional actors, but real Thai people from the area. I mean, all the time we're trying to feed them with reality. We read a lot of uh, texts about people who survive uh, with stories uh, related to the tragedy. We were in contact with the family, and I think that that is that all. If you put all that together, is very helpful for the actors. So the underwater sequence. How was that done? She she was in a tank. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, the, the underwater was shot in a in a in a small tank, an interior, uh, and, and the scene when they are dragged by the water, that was uh, shot in a, in a huge water tank in Spain. Uh, we had like three sequences, uh, one was the moment when the water arrives, and most of it was shot with a model, with a miniature. Uh, when the actors were dragged by the current, they, they, they were uh, uh, into this uh, huge uh, water tank with, uh, inside this kind of teacups with trucks, so we can move them with joysticks. Uh, and then there is this other sequence, the underwater scene, uh, where Naomi was, uh, most of the time, was sitting in this chair underwater and, and spinning around. Uh, it was very, I mean, it was very brave uh, for her. I mean, it was uh, quite, a, quite a challenge to do all those sequences, because most of, of it was real. Uh, we didn't use CGI, we didn't use blue screen, so most of it was practical shooting. Let's move on to the Oscars. What are, <laughs> what are your hopes for the Academy Awards? Do you guys think about that at all? Uh, I think we work for it because I think it's after uh, the, the, the quest and, the, and the, all the time we spend in the film, we think that everyone that's worked in the film deserves the opportunity to, to be there. Right. And, uh, but we feel that um, we, we need to show the film. I think we, we need to have people watching it. We don't really know how it works, so we're now like uh, starting to to learn um, how is uh, this organized, and uh, we're going like through different screenings, trying to to do some Q and A's and explain to the people how we how we did this film. There are a lot of questions when you see the film, so that we really like to do. But the rest is like uh, I feel it, it's not in our hands. <laughs> we we did the film, and and that's it. Well, but we have the feeling that. All the people involved in the film did their best. I mean, we had the extra responsibility of, of telling the story of these people, uh, and, and this is something that you notice. Uh, we, we notice uh, during the shooting. I mean, that there was this responsibility that probably that was the reason I had. Uh, I'm, I'm sure that all the people involved in the film did, did their best. And, and if you think about Naomi Watts, her 
Tom Holland, Hugh McGregor, the cast and all the crew. Uh, I'm, I'm very happy for all, all the work they did. Yeah, Naomi was, uh, I mean, she was working for seven months with us. It was a very, very long shooting. Actually, it, was, it has been her longest shooting, right? Yeah. Even more than King Kong, so it was like, what? Wow. <laughs> so there was really a, like, um, at, at a point, the, the, the commitment became something personal to all of us. The fact that we shot in the same locations that the, where the real story took place and we met real survivors, all that, like, put everyone in the mood of we have to do it, we have to do it right. right. So I think it's uh, the, the moment to show it to the rest of the world. And talking about the Oscars, it's more about how do you see and know how do we see, so... <laughs> <laughs> it's more about the press <laughs> It is. Yeah. Well, I think you guys have a great shot, so congratulations again on the movie. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.